Welcome, listeners, to an industry's insight, the podcast where we're all about the interviewees who have been or are still in the music, publishing, marketing, film, advertising, managing business, and more. I'm your host, Thomas Grabuznik. And I'm Dino Ciccarelli. And let's get right into it. So here today, we have a good friend, my old roommate. We have Mr. Joe... I get, Joey, I can't say your last name. Gutierrez. 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 Everyone messes up. No yeah. worries. <laughs> I know that everyone messes my last name. So, right off the bat, well, I know you have a YouTube, right? We, we do have a YouTube, yeah. And what's it called? Uh, my my group's uh, YouTube name is Cinema Suicide. Okay. Do you have your own? Right, you have your. I I do have my own. Mine is just much harder to find and there's not really much on there mm. so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna plug my groups for now okay so and who's in that group uh so currently um i guess the main people in it is myself john arvalo dakota nelson uh nicole dark and matt sharon uh we also have Aaron Hall in it, who's our visual uh, effects guy. I don't know if he still goes to class here any, anymore. Uh, I haven't seen him that often, but he's still technically in the group. And we may have a new member soon, but we're still seeing if she wants to actually join. So, okay. um, I have to ask, what does that name mean? Cinema Suicide? Yes. Uh, so originally our name was Undecided Dorks because we couldn't <laughs> figure out an actual name. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were just scrambling to think of something. Uh, and last semester, we all took, well, not all of us, but a majority of us were taking this class that just turned out to be the worst class we have ever taken. Uh, where we all just kind of got screwed over. We put a lot of time and our own money into making this project that went nowhere. And everyone hated it. And everyone wanted to drop the school in general. Everyone wanted to leave. So we all made a suicide pact. <laughs> Uh, or we jokingly made a suicide pact. It was like, if this project doesn't happen, we're just going to kill ourselves. I was like, oh, man, it'd be, we're, we're going to do a cool little cinema suicide. And everyone was like, yeah. And then uh, Matt was like, you know, that's a really cool name. I was like, that is an awful name if we try to go into festivals. <laughs> He's like, but it's really angsty. And I was like, you sold me. And then we went with that. I mean, I feel like there's a lot. There's some crazy ass names out there, so. Oh, there, there definitely is. It's just I feel like it's gonna. It's a little hard to market yourself when you have suicide in the title of your name, but. But you, well, you got Suicide Squad. We do have Suicide Squad, and they're po- and they're popular and everything. So it's like. We uh we get made fun of a lot. We get we get called the Cinema Suicide Squad a lot. Actually, it, it happens almost every time our name comes up in something. I mean, it'd be kind of a compliment because like. The Suicide Squad is pretty badass, so. I mean, I'll I'll take it. Yeah. We're nowhere near as popular, but I'll take it. <laughs> One day you might be. Fingers crossed. So did all of you guys meet through Five Towns, or did you guys meet from um, third party? We, almost all of us met through working in the equipment room. Um, Dakota, I knew before I actually went to the school. We both went to college, or, yeah, we're in college now. We both went to high school together. Okay. And uh, we didn't really know each other, but then we took like this BOCES class where we sort of took film together for the last two years there. Mm -hmm. And then somehow we wound up going to the same school because we both got scholarships to go here. Yeah. And we both just wound up working in the equipment room with a bunch of other people. It's really cool. It's like a little family down there. (laughs) (laughs) When and why did you get into uh, filming? Ooh. Um... I've always had, like, an overactive imagination. Uh, Even as a kid, I didn't really grow up with cable. Uh, I grew up in just, like, a poopy apartment uh, with no cable, and I didn't really have any way to entertain myself besides, like, toys, or I would Mm -hmm. go outside and I would, like, play sticks and play Dungeons & Dragons or whatever, and I just, like, used my imagination to keep myself entertained for the first 10 years of my life. And then uh, I started watching movies, and I started doing other stuff, and reading books a lot and I was like wow I can just people are creating this whole magical world for me and I'm just witnessing it and I wanted to uh originally I wanted to write books but I'm not the best writer I'm okay but I'm not the best writer Mm -hmm. and then I was like 
how else can I get my actual ideas and imagination out there in like a creative outlet that means something? I was like, you know what? I'll give, I'll give film a chance. I will give film a chance. Uh, and here I am. Uh, I started it probably eighth grade because my high school had the program. Like in 11th grade, you can take this. But uh, at the end of 8th grade, when you're actually going into 9th grade, they're like, we have these elective courses that you can take in a couple years. And I was like, I will remember that. And then I, I remembered that. And I applied as soon as I could to get mm -hmm. into that class to start doing like filmmaking and stuff. That's cool. So that's about like five years or so? Oh, yeah. Five, six years? It has been a very long time. Uh, what made you choose Five Towns as your uh, college of choice? Um, I didn't apply to that many colleges when I was, um, leaving high school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do mm -hmm. when I went to college. I didn't really know any college I wanted to go to. And I got accepted to a couple and I got a scholarship to go to five towns. And I remember when I was doing, uh, the dorming or when I was doing like dorm tours and everything, I was like, the dorms are cool mm -hmm. and Dakota's going there. And I was super antisocial uh, in high school. So I was like, it would be good to know someone yeah. when I went in there. Mm -hmm. so I was like, one friend is better than none. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, at least I have one going in. So that was a pretty big influence for me, mm -hmm. at least knowing I have someone there. Gotcha. What do you do here at Five Towns? Oh, God, what don't I do here? <laughs> um, everyone in the equipment room would give that response. But so I work in the equipment room. Um, I TA at a class, I TA two classes over the summer. Uh, I read, I repainted a bunch of stuff in the equipment department. Uh, I actually ran cables from the radio room all the way to Bursar for Tom over the summer. Okay. Uh, I do all that. Uh, I tried tutoring. That didn't really work out, but mostly I work in the equipment room, um, so I basically help manage it with Charlie and Merck and everyone else there. So we just give out equipment to people. We keep everything organized and try to give everything to the various departments around the school. So like when Tom comes and he's like, hey, I need this. We know where it is. Um, over the summer, they had like these, uh, I don't know what you would call them, but they were like these training courses for like high schoolers that want to get into film. And they had two of them. They had the beginners and uh, the advanced version. I use advanced very, very loosely. But they're like, oh, you can, you want to come in TA for that? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I TA'd for the first one. That was like two weeks. I was already working here over the summer. So I was like, oh, I'll do it. And then for the second one, they crammed it down to only like a week. But they stayed late and would film in the morning because they were sleeping here. Mm -hmm. So... And then I stayed here. Uh, so every, every day I would come and I would help them film and everything. Um, I also helped run the media art show when that recently just passed. Uh, I was running the camera down over in the equipment room and playing videos and stuff for everybody. So I was I, I try to be a jack of all trades in the school, mm -hmm. do anything that anyone needs. You, you do a lot of the um, filming of like events that go around? Uh, I used to do that more my freshman year. There's not as many, or they don't ask us to do as many events anymore. I'm mm -hmm. sure they do. I just don't hear about them <laughs> as much. But there used to be, like, theater shows. I was like, you want to do it? You want to do it? I was like, sure. And it was easier when I lived here because I could just walk over and do it. Yeah, it any time. Yeah. I don't, I don't do that as much unless I'm, like, actually here. Mm -hmm. But if there's an open house there, like, there was one, uh, like, a week or two ago. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I came here. I had work uh, that day. I came here super early, helped at the open house, and then immediately ran and actually went to work. So, like, I tried to cram it in as much as I could because mm -hmm. no, there was really no one who could make it besides Dakota. So I was like, he can't run an open house for the film department on his own. I'll go and help. And so I just tried to be helpful in any way I can. That's good. That's good. Were you self-taught or did you learn, like, how to... Like, with filming and everything, like... Uh, I don't know. I guess I'd say it was 50-50. Um, I learned how to... Like, I was just super into watching movies and stuff and writing it, so I learned, like, what made a movie cool, like, the thematic elements of writing a movie and all that stuff. So I was into that. 
But I had a BOCES class that I took in high school, and that taught me, like, granted, I'm, I was a high schooler, so I wasn't really the most attentive. So my teacher's like, oh, so this is how you use a camera or whatever. I was like, I know what I'm doing. I don't need anything you need <laughs> to tell me. And then I knew nothing of what I was doing, and I somehow managed to make a 10-minute long movie. That didn't turn out bad, but I somehow managed to make it. And then upon getting here and actually taking courses that taught me how to do things, I was like, oh, my God, how did I somehow stumble my way through <laughs> using this? So I definitely learned more here than I did on my own. I, I try to teach myself as much as I can because I have, like, my own camera and stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to, like, constantly keep myself up with that. But I definitely learned way more here. On the aspect of film, uh, which one... What would you pre uh, prefer? Like, do you prefer the filming side? Do you prefer editing, doing special effects? Like, I, that's a good question. I, I came here and I wanted to do like camera stuff. Okay. And I still want to do camera stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm also good at other aspects of it. Like, I always had the active imagination and I always liked writing. So when it came to actually writing films, I realized I'm not that bad at it, mm -hmm. and I kind of have a knack for it. Yeah. So I also do that. Um, and I also edit my own projects most of the time just cause I like being able to do it myself. Yes. So I also edit my own projects. <laughs> uh, and I help with stuff behind the camera, but our group kind of has like a dedicated person who does camera stuff. Yeah. And he's good. He's better than me at what we do. So I'm, I'm humble enough to know that he's better than me. So he does the stuff and I help him and I, we, we try to keep like a flow with that, but I, I like to do a lot of things, really. That's good. Keep myself well-rounded. <laughs> <laughs> so, was anyone in your family into film or uh, mm. what's the word? So, cinematography? That's word. Was anyone into that? No, honestly, my family wanted me to be a history teacher. <laughs> uh, they were, okay. Well, did you I, like history? Oh, I mean, I love history. Okay. I'm, I'm good at it. Mm -hmm. And I think they're still banking on me being a history <laughs> teacher. But, yeah, I mean, nobody really had... Nobody in my family went to college besides my uncle. So I'm the second person in my entire family ever to go to college. Um, and he's going for, like, business and architectural stuff. So me wanting to do the arts was very surprising for everybody. Mm-hmm. Because there's nobody in my family who's artistic. So nobody who really, I would get that from. It was like, oh, are you sure you don't want to be a history teacher? <laughs> I was like, yes, mom, there's too many teachers in New York as it is. But yeah, I just kind of fell into it. I Having zero friends and just playing with sticks outside when you're five years old, it's like, man, what can I do with this overactive imagination? Mm -hmm. Can't be a desk job. So I was like, oh, I can make films. I don't think I'm bad. <laughs> what do you think, in your opinion, makes a good film? Ooh. Hmm. I mean, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of things that make a bad film. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I could ramble about that for a very long time. Um. You can ramble. It's okay. Oh boy, what makes a bad film? I'll start with that. Uh, bad sound. Sound is like super easy to mess up. Mm -hmm. Like. We were we were shooting in here actually over the weekend and we're using like wireless mics the entire time. And like on the levels it looks pretty good or whatever. It's like, oh yeah, this is awesome. And I was editing it today and I was like, Oh, this sounds like we're speaking through a tin can. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't hear that. So it's like, well now I have to cut around that because it's a whole forty five second monologue. Yeah. And it's a big part of my movie. Mm -hmm. So sound sucks. Acting, you can kinda of just be like, ah, bad acting, it's whatever. Um I think cinematography is the easiest thing to just like, it's pretty and all, but I don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Like you look at it and you're like, wow, that really captivated me. But it's definitely, you don't need it. Like you guys ever hear of the movie Tangerine? I don't think I have. No, I don't think so. It's this new Netflix movie. I think it okay. won something at Sundance. Okay. But it's an entire movie filmed on an iPhone. And they just put a gross orange tangerine. Oh filter yes, I've on heard it. about that. Okay, I remember <laughs> the whole movie filled by an iPhone. I remember that. And it looks disgusting. <laughs> it's awful, and it's just like it doesn't look good. But mm -hmm. like the storytelling's good enough that it's like, 
I'll swallow it for two and a half hours. Like it bypasses it. Yeah, like you don't notice it as much. Yeah. Like there's definitely things where it's like, wow, this is super pretty. But then like you forget about it in 15 seconds Mm -hmm. because you're focused on the story and everything. Mm -hmm. So I think story and sound really make a good movie. Because everything else you can kind of forget. No, I agree with the sound because uh, last semester I took a an AV post class and basically our final project was to take all the sound out of the uh, the clip that we chose. It was supposed to be like a five minute clip and we had to recreate all the music, all of the sound effects, dialogue, you name it. And doing that was like, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but it's so difficult, especially because yeah. like I'm an audio student. So it's like, we're not, re- we're not really going for like making Foley noises and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But, um, this does definitely really interesting. I very much agree with you. Sound makes good movies. Um, yeah. Well, what would you what would you say that? Uh, what are like the big aspects that make a movie or make a film? Um, story, sound, acting, uh, cinematography, and editing. I would say like those are the main five. Editing. Everything just has to be in pace. So it's mm-hmm. not something you notice when it's good, but it's something you definitely notice when it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any like uh any films that you admire? Or any Oh god, Lord of the Rings. It's like my <laughs> favorite movies of all time. They they were what made me want to be like a filmmaker. That that's what got you going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know when I saw those movies. I'm gonna around and just be like, say I was ten years old. Little ten year old Joey seeing those movies, the crazy stuff that they're doing, blew my mind. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god, how can I make something like this? And then I started reading the books behind it, and I was like, there's this whole magical world behind this, mm-hmm. and it's being told to me visually. Yeah. So it just like blew my mind. I was like, I want to be able to make something like that. How do I get to do that one day? Mm-hmm. So that is definitely like what got me into wanting to make it. Is there a specific like director or cinematographer that you admire that you like their work when it comes to like um, camera work and stuff like that? Or, um, hmm. I like Peter Jackson a lot. Okay, that's very. He did the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit series. Yes, so mm-hmm. I'm definitely down for him. I like Guillermo del Toro a lot. Okay, just because like, you ever see um, Pan's Labyrinth or anything? No, but I've heard of it. It is a really really good movie. But, like, he gets so into the characters. He has, like, this little notebook where he writes everything, every thought he has about the characters, every thought mm-hmm. about the world he's creating. Doesn't even have to make it into the movie. He's building it for himself. Yeah. And he has, like, little drawings of what he wants every character to look like. And he's, he's writing a book for a movie, and no one's ever going to really see the book, and it's just for him. And yeah. I find that really interesting. That, That's like, really cool. He's building it for himself. Mm-hmm. Um, so for, like, for like me and Dino, you know, with being musicians, we would get like ideas and techniques from listening to our favorite, you know, artists. Is, do you do the same thing with um, any like producers or films that you watch? You get like any cool ideas? Um, I mean, definitely, yeah. I I definitely it's mostly with like camera stuff where I'll see that and I'll be like, I could probably do that. I can probably recreate that. So mm-hmm. I'll just like rip it mm-hmm. and be like, how can I put that in my own movie? Um, I can't think of specific movies I do. I like the Luminaries last year, which is our like yearly uh, film screening. There was like a lot of stuff that showed and a lot of really good like cinematography and stuff. So I'm just looking at it. I was like, hmm, I could take that. <laughs> it's like they probably won't remember last year if I take it. <laughs> so I just rip it, and it's just like, yeah, I can I can retrofit that for my movie. You have any um, films going into the Luminaries this year? Um, I group as a whole, we kind of have, oh God, we have a bunch actually. Um, we all did an experimental film. Mm -hmm. So that's four films right there. Okay. Um, I don't know if all of us are going to do it, but at least three of us are going to do it. Yeah. Uh, we all have our narrative films going in. That's what I'm currently editing. That's what a lot of us are currently editing. So that's three or four again right there. Um, and then my friend John has... I think three music videos going in there. Oh, wow. So we are doing just a bunch of stuff. That's and good. And we're going to just like put our logo all over the luminaries. 
Because if you just... Just brand it. Yeah, if we put as much as we can in there, we're bound to at yeah. least win something. Just brand the <laughs> heck out of there. And when are the luminaries this year? Um, Early May. Okay. I, on the piece of paper that they hand out, I think it says it's like May 7th and May 8th. Okay. But I wouldn't quote me on that. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I honestly can't remember. Mm-hmm. I know when the deadline is. I can't remember when the screening is. Though. Gotcha. As long as you know it's the deadline. <laughs> That's I'm just counting down the days. Like, I yeah. got to get it done before April 26th. Mm-hmm. I got to get it done. <laughs> now, uh, did you have any in there last year? or? <laughs> I had... Yeah. I'm pretty sure you told me this when we were roommates. Yeah, I had spooky things, which was not my finest project. It wasn't great. It was, it was kind of funny. But um, we had a four-episode miniseries called Spooky Things. Oh, I remember it, yeah. Which is basically just um, about this guy, Morgan, who is a ghost hunter. Or he thinks he's a medium where he can speak to ghosts. Mm-hmm. So he goes and he tries to hunt down various ghosts. Um, and with his two cameramen, he finds a ghost. And it's the ghost of Joan Rivers. Oh, and Joan gosh. Rivers <laughs> possesses one of his cameramen. And then run off. So the entire series is about him and the one unpossessed cameraman trying to go and get uh, their old uh, cameraman back. So we all had to write and direct mm-hmm. a different episode. So every single episode has a different like director and writer on it. Yeah. So everything may not flow as well, mm-hmm. but like the overarching story is there. Yeah. It wasn't a great project. It was, it was funny, and it got third place with audience choice, all tallied up, but third place ain't first place. <laughs> so. I mean, at least th- oh, that's something. Oh, no, I, I cling to that. I was like, we almost won. <laughs> yeah, third place. It's only motivation to, to do better, to mm-hmm. win, rank yourself up more. Yeah, so. that's, that's the thing. We were like, comedy is the best way to go mm-hmm. last year, and okay. then this year. I don't know if we're doing any comedies because we we're all good at comedy, but I feel like comedy is kind of an easy thing to do. Yeah. Like, you know, what's funny. And mm-hmm. like, even if nobody laughs, you can be like, well, oh, that was kind of funny. Yeah. All you need to hear is someone like exhale from their nose slightly. And you're like, oh, they found that funny. <laughs> so you have to feel, just hear the little smirk. Like, you just, hmm. that's uh, yeah. So like comedy, I feel like is easy. It's kind of cheap. So I was like, guys, we got to do drama. We got to do something that pushes ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I, nobody was really on board with it. And then we just didn't really talk about it. And then somehow this semester, we all started doing dramas. Mm-hmm. And I silently like, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God we're not doing uh, poopy comedies. Where well, it's, it's just good. Like, you get to think up out of the box. You get to express better ideas and mm-hmm. stuff like that. No, it's really yeah. cool. I'm happy we get to like actually test ourselves like, can we make something other than one cheap joke in a four-minute yeah. movie? Mm-hmm. I'm going to see these, the Luminaries. Yeah, hey, come to the Luminaries, mm-hmm. sponsored by B&H and Final Draft. Please come. <laughs> <laughs> if we remember, we'll get you guys the dates. Yeah, if, if I, if it's somewhere in my bag, but that's all the way over there. Mm. Now, on set, I can bet that there's always shenanigans going on, whether, yeah. whether it's the actors goofing off or um, behind the camera. But can you tell us any type of like crazy story that's happened while you guys were filming? Uh, yeah, yeah. So last semester when we came up with the um, name Cinema Suicide, it was for this one class, Vid442, which was an advanced production workshop. I'm using air quotes when I say this. Uh, <laughs> And it was basically a workshop where the original idea was we're gonna we're gonna make this movie that the teacher writes and we're gonna make it. And okay. We're like we're scrapping that. You guys are gonna write something and we're all gonna work on it. That's gonna be one big production. Okay. And we spent so many months working on that. We came in over the summer to like talk about it, to finalize the plot, to talk about buying materials. We were gonna shoot the entire thing on film, like actual film. Okay. That all fell through. Oh. <laughs> so, like, don't worry. We can still shoot the project, mm-hmm. but we won't use film, and we'll get some money, and we'll paint a set, and we'll build a set from scratch. So we built the set, and one day, we had a group chat. They were like, all right, we're going to go paint the set. Anyone who wants to help can come help. I was like, okay. So the director goes, um, all right, yeah, we're painting the set green today. Or, no, I'm sorry. We're painting the set purple today. Everyone had agreed on... Uh, green, but it was just like, 
Okay, it says purple, so I guess we're doing purple. So we go in, and she's painting it purple. I guess no one saw in the group chat that he said purple. Mm -hmm. So this one girl is painting the entire set purple. She's almost completely done. And it's like, oh my god, it's supposed to be green. We have to scrap all of this. We have to change all of it and repaint the entire thing. Then we also wanted to put wooden floors down because it was supposed to use to be like a bedroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we bought a bunch of wooden like things for the floor. Mm -hmm. And we started putting it in and we got maybe a quarter of the way in. And it was like, we don't have enough money to actually buy the rest of these planks. We have about 70% of them. We have to scrap this now. Yeah. So we I had to uh -huh. rip it up. <laughs> it's like, we, we got to sell it back and get carpet. Mm -hmm. So we had to go and sell the planks to buy carpet. And then the day of we were going to actually start shooting, the director of photography couldn't make it. He's, he's the one who's like, uh, these are the lenses we're going to use. These are the lights we're going to use. The camera angles. He's like, that's his main job. He couldn't make it because he was sick. So the teacher comes in and he's like, Roger, he, he can't make it. We need someone temporary to be it. And I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> it's only one day. It's whatever. And he points at me and goes, Okay, you're it. Tell Nick he's fired. Joey, you're the DP for the entire shoot. Oh. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> We've been working on this for four months. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I was only supposed to pull focus. <laughs> so, like, day of, we're scrambling and everything, and everyone's freaking out on the project. And then when we're actually shooting, the director gets up in the middle of the shoot, walks out, and we're like, what happened to him? It's been 25 minutes. We find him, and he's calling the original DP, just wailing, just, they're ruining your movie. They're ruining it. We can't do it. We have to scrap the entire project. And then the original DP is calling us. He's like, guys, you got to stop messing it up. You're making the director sad. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I don't know what you want to do. <laughs> You're making him sad. <laughs> we can't do the project. We're ruining it. And the person who wrote the script ended up having to act in the script. Because the teacher was like, we got to have him be the actor for no reason. Just because. Just because. Huh? We got maybe, oh my God, it was maybe a 12 page script. We shot maybe two pages and then we canceled the entire thing. Oh, oh wow. My God. We started that in August and we got maybe halfway through the first semester of solid work and we scrapped it. We scrapped the entire thing. Mm -hmm. The set's still there. We built it like an actual house. It's built with real wood. Mm -hmm. It's like actually hard to move because we built it like it was a real house. Mm. And it's painted Barney purple. <laughs> no one wants to use it. <laughs> uh, we have the carpet that we put in and we have everything. And it's just a reminder that we all screwed up. <laughs> and the entire project crashed and burned. And that counted as an internship. So now oh. I don't have to take an internship because I took that class. So that class was just like... That class... Did you guys do anything after that? Or like... <laughs> we tried to scramble. So it's like, we're going to shoot little one minute or one to two minute little scripts. Mm -hmm. So we shot the first one and it was awful. And then we shot the second one, which is directed by my friend Matt. And he's shooting it. And it just didn't work out. Just every... It was it was difficult. We were using like they wanted to use this camera that we have, the Black Magic Pocket, and we have two of them in the equipment room. But for some reason, they were broken. We have there's an HDMI port in it, so that you can plug it into a monitor, mm -hmm. but it's like a mini HDMI port. Both of them, the receiver of it was jammed inside of the camera, Damn. so when you shook it, you could hear it bounce around. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't actually plug anything into it because it was just it was just shattered. Yeah. So it's like. Okay, so those cameras are useless. And I was like, hey, guys, I have one of those. You can use mine. So they started to use mine. And I, the teacher at the time actually forgot who, who I was. <laughs> so uh, one day he comes into the equipment room. He's like, all right, everyone who's in this class, come on. We're going to have a meeting. Uh, you and you. And he points past me both times. Come on, we got the class. And he walks away and he leads them into the class. And I was like... He was staring at me. Does he not know I'm in the class and he's using my camera? <laughs> so then I'm heating up my food in the upbeat and he walks up to me. He's like, yeah, so we're going to need your camera for the thing. I was like, I, sh sure, I guess. Do you know I'm in your class? <laughs> he's like, of course I do. I was like, 
All right. Okay, who told you I was in the class? <laughs> like, did someone tell you? Like, did you notice I wasn't there? <laughs> like, did you just learn now that I was in the class? Like, you're, you're, yeah. Do you have any idea I'm here? <laughs> so we filmed the entire thing. And it just didn't come out good. Mm. And I feel bad because it was like a passion project, but it just it hasn't it has not seen the light of day yet, even because the editing got messed up. Oh, my God. My friend Matt, when he's editing the project, all of it is color corrected. So he goes to drag it into the editing software mm -hmm. and it deletes all of the color uh, color corrected footage and puts in the old footage. So that's maybe a week of color correction just disappeared it was just hard deleted off his hard drive for no apparent reason Damn. wow so it's just gone and he's like oh oh i guess i have to restart <laughs> my god so there's no chance of any lost footage leaking i mean not that i know of <laughs> people periodically is like hey what's happened into that project mm. i'm like that's a good question i don't mm. know <laughs> so it's it's kind of become like an inside joke now sadly how do you balance you're filming with like other obligations, like your uh, uh, girlfriend or children, which I don't think you have. Thankfully not. <laughs> uh, your job and obviously schoolwork. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of difficult because I have two jobs. One of them is here. Um, the other one, I also work a part-time job. Uh, and I do have a girlfriend and I also have a family of eight, including me. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to balance all of them. And that's not including actually going to school. It's really just like I set a lot of calendar alarms for myself. So I remember what I do. So it's like I have a system where I set my alarm to wake up in the morning an hour and a half before I actually have to leave. Mm -hmm. So I don't actually have to remember what my classes are. I just have to remember I have to leave in an hour and a half and it takes me less than an hour to get there. So my class will start in an hour. So I have that system to go there. And then it's like trying to finagle working weekends and also filming because weekends are the best days to film and trying to like also watch kids and do schoolwork and stuff. A lot of it is just picking and choosing what you actually do in terms of schoolwork. Hmm. Like, I don't think I've done my math homework in four weeks. <laughs> Thankfully, she doesn't check it and I get high enough grades that she doesn't ask about it. That's but good. I have just not done it. Hmm. We like... I also have to do a music video and a narrative project and they're all just getting thrown at me and that's not including all the other friends ones I have to do mm -hmm. and I have to edit this like it's it's bad it's hard I I just luckily somehow manage it <laughs> I do not know how like yesterday I started my day I came here I went to class I worked in the equipment room immediately left edited until 9 30 at night went home immediately went to bed to wake up come here go to school and then after this i'm gonna go act in a thing so immediately after class ends i have to run and i have to go act and then i go home and then i just keep keep cycling that my god and i have to somehow edit a project and somehow shoot another project in that time so it's just luck and a lot of alarms to remind me of things I have to do. Just like it, just, just like you didn't know when to do to when, you know. Yeah, I like just an alarm will go off. That's just like, oh, do your drone flying homework, idiot. And I was like, oh, thanks, past me. I yeah. do have to do that. <laughs> and then I'll go and thanks do that. Me from the past. <laughs> I set. Oh my god! I think it was this weekend because we were gonna shoot. I had to remember to dump all the footage and mm -hmm. charge all the batteries and everything. Yeah. So I set three different alarms, each 30 minutes away from each other, to remind me to do different things. <laughs> so it's like, dump footage. I was like, oh, thanks. And then half an hour later, charge batteries. Like, oh, cool. The next one is, get props. I was like, oh, you're right. I do have to get those. <laughs> and it's like the day of. So it's just telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm glad I remembered to yeah. do that in the past. Because <laughs> present me doesn't remember. <laughs> probably, probably something I would have to start doing. <laughs> putting alarms yeah it's like listen you need to do this okay thank you you gotta do this you're stupid you gotta do your business homework okay okay well see that's the thing that for me there's varying degrees of like how important it is mm -hmm. if it's just like do this that's not really that important mm -hmm. 
if I start insulting myself, it's like, oh, I'll start doing this idiot. I was like, oh boy, I should start doing that. <laughs> I should get on that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I, oh boy, I'm really telling myself to do these things. <laughs> now, do you have like any career plans right now? Like certain goals that you want to reach within the next year, five years, 10 years? Uh, I'm working on trying to get an internship over the summer. Uh, that's kind of a slow process mm -hmm. and just a lot of applying. I've not really gotten anything yet, but I'm hoping, fingers crossed. Uh, my goal is to hopefully get an internship either this year or next year and try to get like an in of some kind. Okay. And hopefully just rack up enough hours on set and stuff that when I graduate, it's relatively easy for me to join the camera union. Yeah. Just because that's like steadier jobs and stuff. Or I'm going to freelance myself. Okay. So I'm I'm just working on getting a big enough reel and getting enough hours that I can use the reel to get a freelance job and I have enough hours to take the camera union test. Mm -hmm. So I can go either way with that and it just makes it easier for me. In the future do you is there anything specific you specifically you want to gear to like if you want to stick to just to screenwriting since you said you're mm -hmm. good with story writing? Or if you want to stick to just being on set or directing, is there anything specific that you want your to set your mind on once you get once you're older and you're actually in the field? Mm -hmm. um, over over winter break, I learned that I think I really like pulling focus, okay. like for the actual camera. So I'm not camera op and I'm not director of photography. Mm -hmm. I like pulling focus, and I also like being the camera op. But I think that might be like what I want to like actually gear my thing towards, okay. like my career, and like the screenwriting and stuff would be something I do on the side with friends when we make our own project. Okay, but like the actual pulling focus is what like my day to day would be. Okay, that's kind of what I would like it to be. Can you explain to like the audience what pulling focus is? Oh yeah, some kind of like <laughs> I'm not trying to guess or like assume what it is. So gotcha. So um, on a camera, you obviously have the lens. And on the lens, there's like a bunch of glass inside of it. It's like a long telescope. And at the center of it, there's this thing called... All right, we're going to forget that because I've, I've forgotten. <laughs> it's this thing that reflects the image that you're seeing back onto the actual sensor of the camera. Mm -hmm. So when you focus the lens, it's just moving the glass forward and backwards. So you're just seeing something farther away or closer. So my entire job would just be keeping stuff in focus. Okay. So okay. just keeping what the subject would be in focus. If I want to focus from one thing to another to do that, like when a person's walking, keep them in focus the entire time. Okay. It sounds like a much easier job. Well, I can bet it's in, uh, it gets intricate because like yeah. those times that you got to do that stuff on the fly, like mm -hmm. mid, mid, like while you're filming. So. Mm -hmm. That is that's pretty cool. I, so in a so in a film, if you see something unfocused, be like, that's what that's what Joey's supposed to be doing. Like, I am really bad to watch movies with my girlfriend with, just because like every time I'm always like, oh that's out of focus. Mm -hmm. oh, I would have lit it like this. Oh they cut off their head. They mm -hmm. shouldn't have done that. You should have moved the camera like this. It's really hard to watch a movie with my girlfriend because she just yells at me because I'm always <laughs> because I'll just lean over and be like, yeah that wasn't it. <laughs> she's like no i don't i don't care i don't mm -hmm. care we're watching a movie on netflix about food it doesn't matter if it's in focus <laughs> yeah. it's like it matters to me that's like in the car or whatever be singing or whatever or being like oh that's not in pitch oh, oh yeah oh, too much auto tune too much auto tune <laughs> no i'll tell you last semester when we when i was taking that av post class um we went to go see the murder on the orient express in theaters oh, i just want to see um, that it was pretty good it wasn't bad um I'm supposed to see justice league yeah, we were supposed to see Justice League, but at last minute, the uh, the class was like, no, we don't want to watch that trash movie. And then we saw Murder on the Orient Express, and they're like, yeah, we should have seen Justice League. It's like, <laughs> thanks, guys. But um, mm. anyway, we basically went to go see the movie just to listen to the movie, of mm -hmm. the aspect of sound. And like literally, we were all sitting in the back of the theater like on our phones, typing down notes. It's like, man, <laughs> this was bad. They should have done this. Like... And so I, I totally understand what, like where you're coming from of like watching movies and like oh man they should have done this I wouldn't have done that if I if I was on this project, um, but yeah no I do agree with you I think that's like a really bad thing about going into this type of field because it kind of ruins just mm -hmm. like the simple things for you yeah mm -hmm. 
like I imagine for people who do like audio and like fully fully mixing, it's yeah. hard to just listen to music and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Just, just like you critique it. Or like if you're watching a movie, it's just like, oh, this could have been like this or I should have done this or yeah, this could have been done better like this. Mm. It kind of just ruins like the actual art of the movie. Yeah. And like my band teacher back in high school always said like she listens to music. Sometimes she'll start conducting <laughs> to it like uncontrollably or she'll hear like up the bass is too low or whatever. She'll be like, oh, this is flat mm-hmm. and she'll, you know, destroy it basically. And that's what she like when you take music theory, this is what's going to happen. And I will admit, there's sometimes I'll randomly conduct the music I'm listening to. So, I understand. Very understandable. Yeah. Um. So another question to ask, uh, I wanted to ask you if you could redo any movie, what movie would you redo, and why? Oh God. Um. What would I redo? My most immediate answer, because you guys brought up, would probably be Justice League. Because I, I like Justice League. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like DC movies. You like them better than Marvel? Yeah, I stopped watching Marvel movies after Age of Ultron. And then I think I just got really bitter. Because he's <laughs> like, man, Marvel's doing better than DC. I'm just not going <laughs> to yeah. see Marvel movies yeah. anymore. <laughs> well, no. Well, I always say this DC's animated movies are so much better. Oh, they're fantastic. The real life, they have to do some work on that. Mm-hmm. I think my biggest complaint about Justice League is like, why not just take like two years and just make a movie before that? Make like, like Wonder Woman did really well. Yeah. Everyone was like, wow, this is what a movie should be. It makes sense. Yeah. Just make another movie about one of the characters. Mm-hmm. Make a Batman movie. Everyone wants a Batman movie. Yeah. Just make one of those so you learn the character. Yeah. Or at the very least, do a Batman movie before Batman v Superman. And then it just fixes problems. Yeah. Makes it easier. No, I agree. Because, like, with Justice League, it was like, okay, we had Batman versus Superman, which was, eh, okay. And then, like, the Suicide Squad really didn't have an effect on Justice League. Yeah. And then Wonder Woman was like, oh, my God. Like... I still haven't seen that. They're like, this is, what, this is what DC should be doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they hit us with Justice League. It's like, okay, here's the rest of the crew. And it's just like, <laughs> um... Origins, <laughs> because like if you think about it, we got Aquaman coming out like in I think November or December. Um, but again, it's after the fact that Justice League came out, so it's like I feel like the way that they were doing it, they should have put it in order, like um, to run the stories like in the timeline, like mm. not have Justice League happen and then Aquaman comes out, but it's before the events of Justice League. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, the prequel. Yeah, exactly. So, no, I, I, I totally see what you mean with that one. Well, um, well, so you would change Justice League? I would change it to like make all the movies introducing the characters first. Okay. Like they have they have cool ideas. You guys ever see the Flashpoint Paradox movie? Yes, like oh. twelve times. It's like one <laughs> of the best ones, and that's what the Flash movie is gonna be. Yeah. Like. I I get that you kind of need the Justice League for the Flashpoint movie, Mm -hmm. but it's like, oh my God, they're going to do a really cool topic. Why not just do the actual characters first? Yeah. Instead of like, I will, here's, here's a movie with eight people you don't care about. Yeah. (laughs) Give us a reason to care. Yeah. Like, who who are these people? It's like, you know Aquaman, but do you really? Yeah. No one knows his backstory. Yeah. No one knows. Like, it's kind of, in the movie, it's kind of like, here's five minutes of Aquaman. Yeah. Here's, here's his backstory. You don't care. Like, make a movie. Now, would you keep the same cast, or would you do cast change? Would you, what would you, what would you do? I don't know if I'd keep the same Flash, but I love Ben Affleck's Batman. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't really a fan of Christian Bale's Batman, which is a very unpopular opinion. I don't like that Batman at all. I feel like he's a good Bruce Wayne, Mm -hmm. but I did not like his Batman at all. I just don't think he's cool in any capacity. Yeah. I think, the, I think the only reason The Dark Knight is a good movie is because Heath Ledger was just great in it. Yeah. yeah. And that it's not a great Batman movie. It's a good Joker movie. Mm-hmm. So. I th- I like the aspect of the Christopher Nolan Batman movies where it was more of the reality. So, mm-hmm. like, there were no superheroes. There were no superpowers. Like, Bane, thank God, was not a freaking luchador wrestler. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I... I when it comes to um, Christian Bale's Batman, I wasn't too big of a fan of it either. And sounding like a 
like a person who smoked like 12 packs a day. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the one, biggest thing that I hate about that. But yeah, like that's why I like that the Batman movies because like the no superpowers stuff. Mm. So you wouldn't change? Would you change Flash? I think I'd, I don't know who I would change him to, but I think I might like dumb down <laughs> his character a little bit, make him less like quippy. Where mm-hmm. his, his entire thing is like, I'm just gonna make jokes. Mm-hmm. Like Barry Allen is serious at some points. Yeah, and his jokes aren't just like dumb quips like he actually has jokes to it so it's like oh maybe i just make him funnier yeah make him an actual character was there any other any other movie besides justice league that you would change i mean nothing off the top of my head i've been seeing just a lot of movies that i actually like lately Mm -hmm. so i don't have much to really complain about Mm -hmm. do you watch like like animated movies and like Mm -hmm. cartoon movies would you do you think about that as well like do you change would you change those if you didn't like them or whatever um, I don't do it as much with like animated movies, but I do it a lot with Dragon Ball Super. Okay. <laughs> because I've, because I'm completely caught up on Dragon Ball Super, but the latest arc, a lot of it just makes no sense. So like every day, because a lot of people in the film department watch it. So mm-hmm. every day we'll walk in and everyone will be like, man, that was really cool. And I'll just sit there with my arms crossed being like, oh, I was really dumb that they did this. They should have done this. So I don't know. I think I just read too much into things in general. And like, it's hard to turn that off. And I recognize it's hard to turn it off. Yeah. But I just keep doing it. It's second nature. Yeah, it's just second nature to look at me like, I know how they should have been made. (laughs) Should have done this and should have done that. This was horrible. Should have done this. (laughs) I always talked about like the Transformer movies. Mm -hmm. I could have done so much. Like I'm not, I don't do film or whatever, but like story wise, I could have done the whole different story better. Oh, those movies are all over the place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would. The first movie was keep that the same. The second movie is where I would change it, and everything else would be different. It'd be awesome and cool, and I wish I could do it. I think I watched the first two, and then after that, I was like, I'm good. And then they kept making them. <laughs> I mean, I watched the rest of them. There were, the uh, Age of Extinction was like, with the dinosaurs, was like, they came, the dinosaurs came out of nowhere. They're like last minute add in. Yeah, isn't it like they're not even based off of real dinosaurs or something? Isn't there like some weird thing about them? I don't remember. It was just like all over the place and it was weird. That was my one of my least favorite. Would you have any advice to give to anyone who's starting out in the film industry? Um, or yeah. who wants to go into like the, you know, being a, a film person? Um. Hmm. Definitely shoot a lot of stuff because you realize like all the things that you're doing uh, when you shoot, like you fall into your own tropes a lot and you realize that when you start shooting more, like, oh, this is a thing that I do a lot and it kind of makes me sort of predictable. I should try to steer away from that. Broaden your horizons. Also, don't think that you're better than anyone. Um, A lot of people in the film department, at least I'm going to use that as an example, a lot of people think they're better than everyone keep your ego down yeah, definitely keep your ego down because there is always someone better than you and then when you realize that it hurts it's like a real fall from grace so come in with like your ego tempered just ready to learn realize like you're gonna go to school for four years you should learn this and definitely like watch movies like mm-hmm. watching movies is kind of a pastime thing but the more you watch them the more you realize like oh this is cool because of this yeah mm-hmm. it'll give you more inspiration mm-hmm you definitely like you piece it apart and you're like, oh, this is cool. I really like this and I know why now. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely a cool thing to do. That's all the time we got, listeners. So I think again, Joey, for being on the show. Uh, just one more time. Uh, what's the platform for your YouTube? What's the name? Uh, our YouTube name is Cinema Suicide. Just Cinema, C I N E M A, Suicide. Okay. So. I- Thank you again for being on here. Thank you. All right. So that's the end of the eighth episode of Industries Inside Podcast. Make sure to go follow us on Facebook, Instagram to get the updates. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like our YouTube page to listen to the podcast if you missed it. So until next time, I'm your host, Thomas Grabuznik. And I'm Dino Ciccarelli. And we'll talk to you guys later. Signing Signing off. off.